Good morning. I know I said I was going to start the video off with a funny face. Well, I did two of them, and when they upload, it doesn't show my funny, weird face at the beginning. I don't know. It's like skips it or something. So, <laughs> we need to laugh. We need to be able to laugh at ourselves. We need to be silly and have fun and not be so serious all the time. I can be serious. I, I can be... Uh, very driven and um, focused on whatever that I'm dealing with or doing or building or, you know, whatever. Um, but we need to be able to laugh and um, be silly. I like to be silly. So um, there was your funny face. <laughs> Today is January 8th, 2022. Um, I know I accentuate 2022 because if I don't, I keep saying 2021 and it's not 2021 anymore. It's 2022. And um, today we're going to be reading um, Genesis 19 and 20. I'm going to go back and because I read completely through chapter six of Matthew yesterday. So I'm going to go back and start with Matthew 6 verses 19 through 34 again, um, just for today. So we stay on track. And uh, Psalm 8 and Psalm 91 for today's Bible reading for January 8th, 2022. Let's begin our time together with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you and we thank you and praise you for the day that you're providing, the air that you're allowing us to breathe for another day. We ask that you prepare our hearts and our minds uh, to be able to um, digest all of the scripture that we're going to be reading today exactly how we need to for exactly where we are in our lives today. I ask the Holy Spirit to join us and um, just work through today, work through us, work through our lives. We invite you in, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. I ask that you um, assist me in the pronunciation of words from the Bible. If I have any um, hesitations in how to pronounce something, you just quickly Allow me to be able to read it properly for our viewers and for us to be able to understand properly. Give me the flow that needs to happen so people can receive your word as they need to be receiving it today. And I pray all this in your precious name. Amen. Okay, this says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. You can look ahead and obsess about fears for the future or take life one day at a time and enjoy it. I do take one day at a time, but I also plan. That doesn't mean that we don't do anything to prepare for the future. We just, just shouldn't be concerned, worried, have it overtake today and the joys of today for tomorrow. We can plan. God expects us to be good stewards of everything, which everything is his. He expects us to be good stewards, but not to worry. But you only live in today, not in the weeks, months, and years that may lie ahead. You can only change life in the moment you're in now. Since worry never improves the future and only hurts today, you'll benefit most from trusting in God and enjoying the spot where he's planted you for now. Um, I do struggle with the here and the now. I, I am a planner. I do like to plan and prepare. I don't worry. I've shared with you that I'm not a worrier, um, but I do take seriously what God has entrusted um, to me and I do like to be a good steward of 
all his things. So I do like to plan and prepare. Um, I'm sure if we dive deeper, I'll understand it a little bit better, that scripture and um, do not worry. I mean, in the scripture it says, do not worry. Do not worry. I don't worry. Do you worry about tomorrow? Do you worry about your future? Um, if you do, give it to God. Give it to God and see what he does with it. Um, after we read today, reflections of today's Bible reading. There's uh, an area to make your notes. What are your top three priorities today? Um, what do you have on your schedule, your to-do list to do today? And how are you doing on your drinking your water? Um, I've been on a long time journey to be healthier. Uh, it's a daily decision for me. Um, I like sweets. Uh, that's my Achilles is I do like sweets. I have improved greatly on my consumption of sweets. Um, but I still do like them. So I try to keep them at a minimum. And um, I try to listen to my body. And if some after I consume something, I don't feel good. Duh. Don't eat it again, Shannon. Hello. So, um... <laughs> I'm human, so uh, when I know that something uh, doesn't make me feel good and I still eat it anyway, um, I suffer the consequences. Um, but I, I have, in my elder age, gotten better at um, not eating the things that don't make me feel good and trying to eat and drink things that make me feel good, that nourish my body and uh, make me healthier rather than unhealthier. We can eat for health or we can eat for disease. And um, daily, I try to eat for health. Not perfect, but I try. So let's start off with Genesis 19 and 20. Genesis, where are you at? Genesis. There you are. Genesis 19 and 20. Oh, this is the conclusion of the Sodom and Gomorrah. Is it going to be destroyed? Um, last time, uh, yesterday when we read about um, Genesis 18, Abraham was pleading for Sodom and Gomorrah. So I guess there were some good people in there or were there? Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed Chapter 19 of Genesis. The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night and then go on your way early in the morning. No, they answered. We will spend the night in the square. But he insisted so strongly that they did, they did go that they did go with him and entered his house. He prepared a meal for them, baking bread without yeast, and they ate. Before they had gone to bed, all of the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called to Lot, "Where are the men who came to you tonight?" Bring them out to us so that me, we can have sex with them. Lot went outside to meet them and shut the door behind him and said, No, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you and you can do with what you like. I will never understand the Old Testament <laughs> with them. But don't do anything to these men, for they have come under the protection of my roof. You see my wheels turning? We'll, we'll go into that diving deeper. Get out of our way, they replied, and they said, This fellow came here as an alien, and now he wants to play the judge. We'll treat you worse than them. They kept bringing pressure on Lot to move forward to break down the door. But the men inside reached out and pulled Lot back into the house and shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the door of the house, young and old, with blindness, so that they could not find the door. The two men said to Lot, Do you have anyone else here, son-in-law, sons-in-law, 
sons or daughters or anyone else in the city who belong to you, get them out of here. Because we are going to destroy this place. The outcry to the Lord against its people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law who were pledged to marry his daughters. He said, hurry and get out of this place because the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons-in-law thought he was joking. With the coming of dawn, the angels urged Lot saying, hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here or you will be swept away in the city when the city is punished. When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand and his and the hands of his wife and of his two daughters and led them safely out of the city. For the Lord was merciful to them. As soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, flee for your lives, do not look back and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. But Lot's, Lot said to them, no, my lords, please, your servant has found favor in your eyes, and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life. But I can't flee to the mountains. This disaster will t overtake me, and I'll die. Look here is a town near enough to run to, and it is small. Let me flee to it. It is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to him, very well, I will grant this request to you. I will not overthrow the town you speak of, but flee there quickly because I cannot do anything until you reach it. That is why the town was called Zor. Zor. That's what I would say. Zor. Z-O-A-R. Zor. Could be Zoar. Either way. Um, by the time Lot reached Zor, the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, including all those living in the cities and also the vegetation in the land. But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and returned to the place where he had stood before the Lord. He looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah, toward all the land of the plain. He saw dense smoke rising from the land like smoke from a furnace. So when God destroyed the cities of the plain, he remembered Abraham and he brought Lot out of the ca catastrophe that overthrew the cities where Lot had lived. Lot and his daughters. Lot and his two daughters left Zor and settled in the mountains for he was afraid to stay in Zor. He and his two daughters lived in a cave. One day, the older daughter said to the younger, our father is old and there is no man around here to live with us, as is the custom over all the earth, all over the earth. Let's get our father to drink wine and then lie with him and preserve our family line through our father. Again, I don't get the Old Testament. <laughs> that night, they got their father to drink wine, and the older daughter went in and lay with him. He was not aware of it when she lay down and when she got up. The next day, the older daughter said to the younger, Last night, I lay with my father. Let's get him to drink wine again tonight, and you go in and lie with him so we can preserve our family line through our father. So they got their father to drink wine that night also, and the younger daughter went to lay with him. Again, he was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. So both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. The older daughter had a son, and she named him Moab. He is the father of the Moabites of today. The younger daughter also had a son, and she named him ben Benami. He is the father of the Ammonites of today. And that's the conclusion of Genesis 19. Woo! We are moving on to Genesis 20. <laughs> Abraham and Abimelech. Now Abraham moved on from there into the region of Negev and lived between Kadesh and Shur. For a while he stayed in Gerar, and there Abraham said to his wife Sarah, She is my sister. Then Abimelech 
king of Gerar, sent for Sarah and took her. But God came to Abimelech in a dream. Oh, okay, I see. <laughs> Abraham's lying again. <laughs> Um, but God came to Abimelech in a dream one night and said to him, you are as good as dead because of the woman you have taken. She is a married woman. Why does Abraham get these men into trouble like that? <laughs> now, Abimelech had not gone near her. So he said, Lord, will you destroy an innocent nation? Did he not say to me, she is my sister? And didn't she also say he is my brother? I have done this with a clear conscience and clean hands. <laughs> Old Testament. Woo. Then God said to him in a dream, yes, I know you did this with a clear conscience. And so I have kept you from sinning against me. That is why I did not let you touch her. Now return the man's wife for he is a prophet and he will pray for you and you will live. But if you do not return her, you may be sure that you and all yours will die. Early the next morning, Abimelech summoned all of his officials. And when he told them all that had happened, they were very much afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham in and said, what have you done to us? How have I wronged you that you have brought such great guilt upon me and my kingdom? <laughs> it's habitual with him. Have you, you have done things to me that should not be done. And Abimelech asked Abraham, <clears throat> Excuse me. What was your reason for doing this? Abraham replied. I said to myself, there is surely no fear of God in this place and they will kill me because of my wife. Besides, she really is my sister and daughter of my father, though not of my mother. And she became my wife. And when God had me wander from my father's household, I said to her, this is how I can show your love to me. Everywhere we go, say of me, he is my brother. Then Abimelech brought sheep and cattle and male and female slaves and gave them to Abraham. The lie works out really well for him. He gets, <laughs> he gets animals and slaves out of the, the whole transaction. And he returned Sarah, his wife, to him. And Abimelech said, my land is before you. Live wherever you like. To Sarah, he said, I am giving your brother a thousand shekels of silver. This is to cover the offense against you before all who are with you. You are completely vindicated. <laughs> oh. Then Abraham prayed to God and God healed Abimelech, his wife and his slave girls, so they could have children again. For the Lord had closed up every womb in Abimelech's household because of Abraham's wife, Sarah. That concludes our Genesis 19 and 20 for today's Bible reading for January 8th. We're going to move on to Matthew 6, 19 through 34. Matthew 6, 19 through 34, which concludes the chapter of Matthew 6, 19 through 34 today. Jesus teaches about money. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. The eyes, the eye is the lamp of the body. That is so true. You can read a person through their eyes. I mean, you can literally see into their soul the type of person they are through their eyes. You can read a lot in people's eyes. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, and I know that means multiple things. I do understand that he's metaphorically what you see with your eyes, what you do with your eyes it will create the person that you are. I understand that as well. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Do you serve two masters? Do you love money or do you love the Lord? 
You can have money and love the Lord, but you can't love money and love the Lord. It, it just it says right in his word, we cannot love money and love God. Can't serve two masters. Either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Jesus teaches about worry. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear, is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they are? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? I like clothes. I don't worry about clothes, but I like clothes. I do like that. See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you, O oh, you of little faith. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble in its own. Amen to that. There concludes our Matthew 6, verses 19 through 34. And that concludes the chapter uh, 6. Uh, we're going to move on to Psalm 8 for today's Bible reading, January 8, 2022. Psalm 8. Uh, that's Genesis. <coughs> Excuse me. Psalm 8, that's a 7, okay, here we go. Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You do not want me to sing, but I do love that song. You have set your glory above the heavens from the lips of children and infants. You have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man, that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And that concludes Psalm 8. I love that song. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Love that song. If you don't know what it is, look it up. It's so, it's just a beautiful song. Beautiful, beautiful worship song. Um, we're going to go to Psalm 91. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand. 
but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Psalm 91. That concludes our Bible reading for January 8th, 2022. Genesis 19 and 20. Matthew 6, 19 through 34. And that concludes the chapter 6. And then Psalm 8. And then Psalm 91 that we read today. What are your reflections of this um, Bible reading today? Um, <laughs> I, I just have to giggle every time I read about Abraham lying and saying about his sister and Sarah saying his brother. And um, I'm going to comment more about that in diving deeper in um, that video. Um, but I was also thinking last night that... Even Abraham, who God favored and gave um, many rewards to, many um, uh, a covenant, a covenant with Abraham. And in the first, I mean, we're only on 19 and 20 chapters of the first book of the Bible and he's lied so many times and gotten other people in trouble because of his lies but yet God still used him I'm not saying that to be a liar I'm saying that even he was imperfect and God still used him for great things so we are imperfect we are a flawed being we make mistakes every single day we make decisions that probably shouldn't have been made on a daily basis that um, God can still use you as long as you dwell within the Most High. You desire, you chase after a relationship with Christ. That's what I was thinking about yesterday about that, but... I'm going to conclude our January 8th, 2022 um, reading today. Uh, I will see, see you in diving deeper. Otherwise, uh, until then, God bless you. Be a blessing. And thank you for joining us. I'm really excited about uh, seeing this grow and seeing um, what changes in people's lives um, because of this. If you have any questions... If you have any comments, any additions to the reading that you want to add to, um, let me know. If you need a Bible, uh, let me know. I will send you one. If you don't know Christ and you want to know more about having a relationship with Christ, contact me. Uh, I can go through that with you or I can direct you to someone that um, could or that you would prefer. Um... That's it. Thank you so much for joining and I will see you tomorrow.